The year was 1920. The place? London, England. And in a small neighborhood on the city's east side, the most important scientist that no one has heard of was being born. Her name was Rosalind. Rosalind Elsie Franklin. And she would grow up to help us understand what a human being is made up of. Rosalind grew up in London, and it didn't take long for her to fall in love with science. And by the age of 15, Rosalind was sure she wanted to be a scientist. At least until her father found out. He told her she wasn't allowed to study science or math, suggesting that she try something more suited for women, like typing. Nevertheless, she persisted. And at the age of 18, she was accepted to Cambridge University to study chemistry. Consistently at the top of her class, Franklin was well respected in school and was awarded a scholarship to stay with a famous chemist. His name was Dr. R. G. W. Norris, and she was to be his assistant. The job was a dream at first, and Rosalind learned many things from her mentor. But soon, the partnership soured. Some people say it was because Dr. Norris was jealous of his students' talent. Some say it was because they were in love. Either way, Rosalind soon left and hopped between jobs studying coal in the English countryside and X-ray imaging in Paris. And it was there, in Paris, that Rosalind found what would one day change the course of history. A powerful X-ray technique called X-ray crystallography. The technique, Rosalind found, was powerful enough to see all the way down to our DNA. Fearing someone would see the work before it was ready, Rosalind kept her discovery to herself, with the exception of one man, Raymond Gosling. The two were partners and worked together to study these new rays, eventually being asked to present at King's College in London. And there, at that presentation, stood the man that many say would go on to steal Rosalind's discovery just two years later. His name was James Watson, and he and his partner, Francis Crick, largely ignored Rosalind's presentation. Until the very end. We have reason to believe human DNA is in the shape of a double helix, she said. This caught the men's attention. The shape Rosalind was talking about, the double helix, was the exact same DNA shape Francis and Crick had discussed in their lab, but hadn't been able to prove. They quickly realized, and reports say that they left the presentation soon after. Three months pass. Rosalind continues her work and publishes it in a renowned journal. And there, in the same journal, just five pages away, was the same discovery being claimed by two men named Watson and Crick. The story written by Watson and Crick was praised. Innovative, amazing, world-changing. And Rosalind's work? Well, many copies ended up in trash bins across Europe. Many, but not all. Some kept her work safe. They studied it. They talked about it. They passed it on through the years. And now, that job falls to you, to pass on not only her work, but also her name, and ensure that while we remember Watson and Crick, we don't forget Rosalind Franklin. Because while it is what they said, it is also what she said. To learn more about brilliant women throughout history, visit TWSSpodcast.org.